now we're going to move on to going to location and actually shooting your video. The first part you're going to need to really think about carefully is who is going to be in the shot and that would usually be called an actor or an actress. Now of course if you're doing a small production they're your friends inside of your team on your group but still you need to decide who's going to do what part. So there's two main things to think about in this casting. It's called casting. Two main things to think about for your production. One is pick a person who can do the role, who can do the part, who can do the things you need to do and can be convincing or at least fit what your goal is. If you have a goal of showing how a hero goes through a story and they begin confused and then later they feel confident, is there someone in your group who can look confused and can look confident? If not, then it's just not going to work out. People who get in front of a camera and get you know, their picture taken in a still picture or in a video picture, they look very different than when you see them in real life. So maybe you should take your camera, test it on some of your group members and see who actually can fit the role better. Of course, if you're going to get other people that are not on your team, maybe you should do a test before you go shooting. You don't want to go shooting and then everything kind of doesn't work out. The camera can really change the way people look. It always makes people look fatter and it always kind of doesn't help you make uh, look more beautiful than you are, let's say it that way. It's, it's very unforgiving, they say, in the industry. Very unforgiving. It can be very hard on you. So you have to pick the right person that can really look good in that condition. In fact, you could go to some locations that you're going to shoot at and try to shoot there and see how the lighting works and how the background works. But you can just do a test inside of a room or even just a still camera can give you a good idea. Take some photos. The next part is when you actually shoot your video, a key point is you want to make your actors look good. You don't want to make them look bad. I mean, unless you have a reason to, but usually you won't have a reason to make them look bad. What are some of the things you can do to help them look good? Well, you can avoid making them look bad by having good lighting. That's probably the most important part. Don't shoot your subject and they're in front of a window and all the lights coming in and then they turn all dark, right? Don't have your subject wearing a hat and the hat is blocking their face from the light and it becomes all dark again. You want to help your actor look better or actors look better. Help your talent look good. So do the best you can to help that. And that means that you need to think about your shot. It also means that when you see the shot, if it doesn't turn out, shoot it again from a different angle or a different location or a different light. Using a video even on your phone is just so great, isn't it? Because you can just shoot it and shoot it again. Whereas 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we had to shoot, get the film developed, and we don't know what really happened until the film comes back a week later. So you're very lucky that way. Take advantage of that, shoot, take a look. Even share it with the talent. Say, here's what you look like. And if they're not happy with it, they say, hey, I look terrible. Unless there's a good reason, shoot it again from a different angle, get a different light. All right, let's go off to the hardware table. Okay, we're at the hardware table, and what's our hardware today? Well, finally, you're going to be happy to know we're moving past the sound. I've done so much on sound so far, audio. Why? Because I've always repeated, audio is more important than the video, more important than the image. Now, we've gotten that message into our brain, I hope, so now we're going to move on. And today, since we're talking about going on location for the shoot, we're going to talk about our tripods. You've got to have a way to stabilize your camera. Of course, if you're using something like your phone, it's going to be very hard to keep that phone steady. There's really not a good way. Now, you can buy like a holder for the phone. You can buy one of those holders you use in your car or on a motorcycle maybe and somehow tie that to a tripod to keep it steady. Or if you're using your hand, you probably want to make sure you use two hands and you hold it steady. 
Oh, and by the way, don't forget, when you're shooting video on a phone, turn it this way, right? Everybody shoots the video this way, and you end up with this really weird, tall video. You wanna shoot it this way. So hold your hand close to your body to keep it steady. That's a key point. You wanna have it steady, so it moves steady. Of course, I don't suggest using your phone that way, right? But if you have a camera that can fit onto a tripod, you're going to be way ahead of the game. Tripods are really cheap, they're not expensive at all. And when you borrow a camera from your school or your lab or your department, they probably have tripods already. And even tiny, small, basic tripods can work really, really well. More expensive tripods, eh, it's not really worth it unless you're doing something very special. I do want to show you a different kind of device though, and that's this. This is a bit more specialized, and you can see at the top it looks like a tripod, doesn't it? It has the connections for a camera, but it only has one leg. So this is called a monopod. And a monopod, as you can see, just has one leg. I can go ahead and extend the legs. I have a holder here for it, so let me take that off. There we go, strap it off, and I'm going to extend the monopod like that. And I can put that down on the ground, the bottom leg. And I can put my camera here, and now I can hold my camera steady. Why do I like a monopod? A monopod is great because it's so easy to carry with you. It's much lighter than a tripod. It's very versatile. And you know, a great thing is you can run around somewhere, and you can very quickly just stop and then put, put it down, and then look through your camera and start recording. It's a great way to do it. Of course, it is a little bit dangerous because when you're holding it, you begin to fall over. Your angle of your shot is going to become more and more at an angle, and people are going to feel that's really weird. So you do have to pay attention and hold it steady, and you can get a good shot. You also can use this very quickly if you're on a table and you want to shoot from a table or from a low angle or a high angle. You want to climb up somewhere. I think it's really tiny, you see. I can just go ahead and put it down on a table and shoot. I can also hold it at an angle and shoot like that. I really love monopods, they're great. In fact, for my monopod, I also buy a little strap and I can just hook that on. And now my monopod is ready to go and I can just throw that over my shoulder and it's easy. You know, you can do that with a tripod, that's true. It's a little bit heavier and a little bit more complicated. So I really recommend a monopod if you're not doing a super big shoot. Very, very helpful. Of course, if you're in a studio or you need to shoot someone talking for a long time, like a lecture, now you don't want to use this because you don't want to sit there holding it the whole time. You want to use a tripod for those. But if you're going outside and shooting on location just very quickly, very short shots, your shot list has many short shots, maybe a monopod will work for you. Or maybe you can carry both. That would be a great idea. All right, good luck with your shoot.